Good morning, good morning. Welcome to Trevor Christian Life Center. We're going to worship the Lord and give Him praise and glory in a few moments. Father, we worship you, we magnify you, Lord. We come, Lord, as one body, even though we are separated in our homes, yet we are one in the Spirit right now, Lord. We are shoulder to shoulder. We are your living temple. And I pray that you'll fill us with glory today. Fill us with your presence. Fill us with inspiration. Fill us with revelation. And fill us with power, oh God. Bless your people. Bless them in every home. Bless everyone that's viewing and taking a look and tuning in today. May they be impacted, Lord, greatly in your name. You ready to praise him? Here's some songs then that we've uh, put together. Here's one about the grace of God. <laughs> hey, Kath. Your grace is enough, Lord. I release the grace of God. Hey! Whoa! Raise your faithfulness. Raise your faithfulness, O oh God. You rest on with the center, rest the star. You lead us past the waters into the sea. Thank you, Lord. And nothing can keep us apart. Oh, Lord, will you remember your people? Remember your children. Remember your promise, oh, God. We release your promise. Sing it with me. Come on. The sugar race is enough. Your grace is enough. Your grace is enough for me. And great is your love and justice, God. You use the weak to lead the strong. Yeah, Lord, you lead us in the sound of your salvation. All your people sing, and all your people sing, Lord. Remember, Lord, so remember your people. Remember your children. Remember your promise, oh God. Everybody sing it with me. Your grace is in your Yeah, your grace is enough for me. Your grace is enough. Your grace is enough. Your grace is enough for me. So remember your Remember your children, Lord, remember your promise, oh God. Here we go. Your grace is enough, your grace is enough, Lord, your grace is enough for me. Father, thank you for your grace this morning. Oh, what a mighty God we serve. Isn't he amazing? He's a chain breaker. I pray you change. Whatever's holding you back, I release today. 
You've been walking the same old road for miles and miles. You've been hearing the same old voice tell the same old lies. You're trying to feel the same old holes inside. There's a better life. Oh, you better believe it. There's a better life. If you got pain, he's a pain taker. You feel lost, well, he's a way maker. If you need freedom, a savior. He's a prison shaking savior. You got chains, he's a chain maker. We've all searched for the light of the day in the dead of night. We've all found ourselves worn out by the same old fight. We've all run of the things we know. We got pain when you're the pain taker. If you feel lost, he's a way to make her. You need freedom to save. He's a prison shaking savior. He's a chain breaker. He's a chain breaker. Every chain will break. You believe it. If you receive it, you can feel it. Somebody testify. You believe it. You receive it. You can feel it. Somebody testify. Yeah. Sing again. Come on. You believe it. You receive it. You can feel it. Somebody testify. Oh, you got pain. Well, he's a pain taker. You feel lost. Well, he's a way. You got pain, you got pain, come on, release that pain. He's a pain taker. You feel lost, you feel lost. Make a way, Lord, he's a way maker. Oh, you need freedom, a savior. Well, he's a prison shaking savior. You got pain, in a chain breaker. He's a chain breaker. Break chains, Lord. Break every fetter, God. I declare freedom in your name, Lord Jesus. Oh, claim your freedom this morning. Hallelujah. I need the Lord, don't you? Oh, Lord, we need you, God. The world needs you, Lord. We need you so bad, Lord. Lord, I come and I confess by being healed I find my rest without you I fall apart cause you're the one that guides my heart sing it with me Lord I need you and Lord I Holy nurse, be 
Jesus Christ in me. Get ready to sing it. Come on, Lord, I need you. Temptation comes my way And when I can't stand up for you Jesus, you're my hope and stay Sing it again To change my soul to rise to you When temptation comes my way of the world. Show them the hopelessness, Lord. In the world without hope, without God. Show 
shown them, Lord, open their eyes, that, Lord, more importantly, open their hearts, Lord. Open the eyes of their understanding today. And I pray, God, that, Lord, from Zion, from heaven, goes forth a mighty revival, yes. a mighty awakening, that you send floods of light, Lord, over the darkness. Floods of light, God, into the darkness. That you pierce the darkness in the name of Yeshua Jesus. Lord, that you turn their eyes from blindness to sight. And from darkness to light. Hallelujah. From lostness to being found. Turn them from Satan to God. We worship you. Oh, we worship you. Lord, I pray against the floods of evil and wickedness at work in the earth today. Lord, we send that wicked virus back, O oh Lord, in the name of Yeshua, to Babylon, to Satan's principal city in the heavenly places. Back to his sickness center, O oh Lord. We forbid it to operate any longer, God. We forbid these wicked powers, O oh God, to confine people, to bind people, to harass people, so I pray, God, that you send mighty angels, angel armies, Lord, that you release hosts of angels. We authorize the kingdom of God to come. We authorize the will of God to be done. Lord, we pray for the release of every spiritual blessing and force of heaven. Right now, Lord, to obey evil. To defeat it, Lord. To trample it in the foot. And Lord, I pray for the release of men and women across the nations. Across the nations, Lord. Lord, I need you. Oh, I need you. Every hour, I need you. My one defense. My right. Oh, Lord, how I need you. to come into the presence of God, release angelic power, release the spirit of God. Hey, stay tuned, I've got a great message for you today. We're going to talk about the rise of evil. Let me just give me a second to get uh, set up. Take a look at the screen. Here we go. I've got a message for you today that um, will be an eye-opener. And uh, it's a call to uh, a call to arms. This is a call to arms today. So uh, just as a setup, here we go. Got a, I've got a lot of scriptures to go through this morning, so we're going to be turning to um, the Word of God quite a lot, but keep your eye on the screen, and um, as you do, oh wow, 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 let's take a look at the rise of evil, the rise of evil, that's what we're looking at, the kingdom of darkness, the kingdom of darkness, it's no uh, <clears throat> surprise to anybody that uh, we've got evil and darkness running rampant, you know, across the earth in our system, in our world system. Uh, it's, it, it's expressed in men and women's lives in many different ways. Um, but the scripture I'm going to look at today is found in, in the Gospel of Luke. Now, before I do, I've been in a key train of thought. Let me just, just, just jump straight in and then we'll jump into this morning's message. Uh, hold on to your armchair this morning. We're going somewhere. We're going in the Bible. We're going to the Word of God today on a journey that's going to inform you, that's hopefully going to inspire you, um, and going to cause you to join in with, with uh, God's uh, end time army as we begin to crush evil, and we begin to bring a restoration uh, of the kingdom of God on earth. That's what we're here for. We're not here for defeat. We're not here, you know, to be downtrodden. We're not here to be overcome, uh, but we're here as overcomers to rise up against the tide of wickedness and evil. It's okay, Christy, don't worry. So, uh, just before I go in, remember, uh, uh, we've just come through uh, Good Friday and Resurrection Sunday. Uh, Jesus died on Friday, 
He died to restore your righteousness. And it will all become evident, all become very clear as we begin to, to uh, you know, lay down the track uh, for this train of thought. Uh, he died to restore your righteousness. And why is that important? Well, on Resurrection Sunday, Jesus rose again to restore your spiritual life. Because we were dead in trespassing sins. The word dead, death, just simply means that we uh, were separated from God, separated from heaven, separated from Zion. So, so he died on Friday to restore our righteousness. He died on the, uh, he rose on the Sunday to restore our spirituality. But then he ascended. And he ascended to restore our access and citizenship. You've got to ask the question, why? Well, it's too late when you die. Amen. Jesus didn't open the access just so that you, when you die at the end of your life, that you can depart and go to heaven. That is a truth. When you die, you will go to the Lord for judgment and your eternity will be determined. If you're a believer, you'll, your home will be heaven. If you're an unbeliever, you, you, you will have a, a lost eternity according to the word of God. So I urge you, receive Christ, receive salvation, receive hope. Because the world is already on track for a brand new heavens and earth. God's plan is already in motion and nobody and nothing can stop it. So he died to open up our access, open up uh, our citizenship, restore it. Why? You've got to ask the question, why? Why did the Lord do that? I'll tell you why, because the Lord wants you and I to be world-changing agents. He wants you and I to join him in his mission, in his ministry of the new covenant, which is administering the kingdom of God and the kingdom of heaven and producing it on earth. What Adam was supposed to have done, Adam and Eve, they were supposed to because of their dual citizenship, spiritual life was, was connected to heaven, they had access to heaven, to God's house, God's throne. They were meant to come into his presence, come under inspiration and guidance and God will counsel them. And then they were simply to walk that out and obey and produce heaven on earth. They were, to, they were the guardians and the stewards of the earth. God gave them everything. He gave them full dominion. Full dominion. Now people who say, well, you know, there's so much evil in the world. You know, where's God? If there was a God, why would he allow so, so much evil in the earth? When you understand the plan of redemption and you understand the, the, the plan of salvation, you won't ask that question because it's not God's problem. Evil and wickedness in the earth today is man's problem. Amen. It's man's problem. And I'm going to tell you, listen, if it was God's problem, God deals with wicked and evil, evilness. And I'll show you. He deals with evil and wickedness like lightning. As fast as lightning. God deals with it. Now, you say, well, well, if he deals with it in lightning speed, why is, it, why is he taking thousands of years? Because it's not God's responsibility. Listen to me. It's man's. The highest heaven belongs to God, but the earth, he's given to men, he's given to you and I, men and women, to humanity. To manage it, steward it. We are the guardians. And until we begin to grow up in salvation, until we begin to grow up in faith, until we become the glorious sons of God and take this serious and begin to invest in our spiritual life and begin to invest in our access and citizenship, uh, responsibilities and privileges, and that you and I become empowered by the power of God, that we in league with angels, that you and I are the ones who are to deal with w wicked and evil, uh, uh, wickedness and evil in the earth today. The reason it's, it's delaying is because the church is on the ground trying to entertain the world and entertain believers instead of being in the spirit, uh, working with the risen Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. I'll get your attention. Watch this. So Jesus restored us. Where Adam failed, Jesus came into the earth and succeeded. And I'm going to show you that what Jesus did is he said all authority, he won it all back, all authority in heaven now, in the spiritual realm and in the earth has been given to me. Then he said, behold, I give you authority. He's waiting on the church to rise up in maturity, rise up and begin to use spiritual authority and trample underfoot serpent, serpents, scorpions and snakes and all the power of the enemy. And while the church is sat back saying, oh God, will you come and do something in the world? God is saying, I've already done something. I've restored your spirituality. I've restored your access. I've restored your citizenship. I've restored you to the throne. I've given you authority again. Now come on, get on with it, children. Amen. Let's take a look at our, our scripture then. It's in Luke's gospel. Wow, wow, wow. Ready, Christine? Show me this. On the screen. 
Luke chapter 10 and verse 17. Just give it a moment. Here we go. Are we there? There we go. Oh, I love this. Now listen, Jesus gathered 12 disciples to him. And he, he, he input his whole life. He trained them. He walked with them. He ate with them. Oftentimes, they, you know, they went out the road. They were sleeping rough and all kinds of stuff. But he went out in his ministry. Now, here's what happened. He trained them. And then at some point, he released them and said, now go. Heal the sick. Preach the kingdom of God. Cast out devils. What he did, he, he, he shared his authority. Gave them authority to go and subdue evil and bring the kingdom of God into the earth. Can you see it? Now then. Later on in his ministry, his ministry expanded, another 70 were added to his ministry. He did the same thing with them. He trained them. He, 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 he put into them hours and hours of training about the kingdom of God, about the kingdom of darkness and the kingdom of light and how it worked. And then he authorized the 70. He said, now go, don't take anything with you. you. You'll be taken care of by heaven. They'll take care of you. But you go, preach the good news of the gospel, heal the sick, cast out devils. What we're going to re read now in the text is that they come back on the journey. Watch what happens. This is absolutely powerful. It says, And the seventy returned with joy, saying, Lord, even the demons are subject to us in your name. And he said to them, I saw Satan fall like lightning from heaven. God doesn't mess about. He deals with evil and wickedness in lightning speed. I'll show you. Behold, I give you the authority to trample on serpents and scorpions. And over all the power of the enemy. And nothing shall by any means hurt you. Nevertheless, don't rejoice in this. The spirits are subject to you. But rather rejoice because your names are written in heaven. Wow, 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 wow. And another wow. Isn't that amazing? He sends them out and they're so fired up. They come back with joy. They said, Lord, wow, even demons are subject to us. He said, I saw Satan fall like lightning. It was a flash. But don't rejoice in this, that demons are subject to you. Rejoice in this. Your access and citizenship has been restored. Now, go. I give you authority. What I've done, you do. The whole point of me dying on the cross and restoring your spiritual life and returning to the Father was to open access, was to open restoration, restore your citizenship. Why? So that you can do what I did as I was in the world, so are you. And the reason that evil and wickedness is going on and on and on in the earth is because believers are set in immaturity and in infancy say, oh Lord, will you come and do something about the devil? He did it. He disarmed him. He defeated him. He spoiled him. He led him captive. He's fighting a guerrilla warfare in the spiritual realm. And while Christians are set back, Saying, oh, come, Lord, come, will you do something about the devil? He's saying, no, 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 you do something about the devil. Behold, I give you authority to trample on these serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy. Why is it not being dealt with with lightning speed? Because people are slow. The church is slow. Believers are slow. They'd rather sit around in church being spoon-fed Having some leaders change their nappies. Yeah, putting dummies in their mouth and just, you know, pampering them. They don't want to grow up in their salvation. I'm telling you, listen, amen. You're nearer today to your salvation redemption than when you first believed. It's not a time for being pampered. It's not a time for sitting back while evil, floods of evil. Why in the world should Satan and his hordes and minions get away on our watch with what they're doing? Why should they get away with it? It's a time to act. Let's move through this because I'm talking about the rise of evil. Jesus has sent his disciples out. He's given them authority to proclaim the kingdom, heal the sick, cast out devils. But look, I want to zero in on this today, this, this uh, statement. Jesus said, I saw Satan fall like lightning. I saw Satan fall like lightning. So I've got a lot of scriptures to go through today. Keep your eye on the screen as we read it. And I'm going to pull some different truths out. At why is there so much evil and wickedness going on in the earth? Why, church, since that Jesus has raised us up to be overcomers, has restored our access and citizenship, restored our authority and dominion, why? It has to mean that the church is out of alignment. 
It has to mean that the church is not lined up. And I believe that we're in a transitionary period. God's delivering the church from man-made wisdom, ground-based programs, amen, smart and slick uh, pro programs that they think are going to win the world, amen. And while we're trying to create slick, you know, stuff uh, to reach the world, the devil is having the monopoly of the spiritual realm. See, the church is a spiritual temple and a spiritual priesthood. And she has all authority in heaven and earth. But listen to me. There's a principle. You have to win the battle of the air before you win the battle of the ground. This is why in, in warfare, you know, nations will send in air force before they send in ground force. Because you have to deal with and gain victory in the air until you begin until you gain victory on the ground. Listen to me. The church needs to get off the ground and get into the spirit. We have have organized the Spirit of God right out of the church. Right out. We don't need you because you're a little embarrassing. You'll get us speaking in tongues and, and prophesying and, and you'll, you'll, you'll put us on fire. And, and, and we don't want to kind of freak people out, you know. People are already freaked out, guys. The church has got to get up into the air and she's got to be a temple and a priesthood and join the risen Savior, amen, in his work of restoration. But even then, the Savior has authorized us and he's the high priest of our confession. No confession, no uh, subduing of evil in the earth. No confession, no release of healing power and delivering power in the earth. Watch this then. What an amazing statement. Now that statement actually reveals a number of truths. Stay there, Christine, on it for, for, for a minute. Number one, I saw Satan fall like lightning. tells us that Jesus pre-existed before he came to earth. Before he came to earth, he witnessed this fall. Now that we also, uh, it reveals that God wastes no time in dealing with evil. The moment that Satan tried to rise up and in his rebellion and tried to uh, take God's throne, as we'll see in a few minutes, the moment he tried to upset heaven's righteousness, peace, and joy, God dealt with it in lightning speed. Amen. And Jesus said, I saw him fall like lightning. Wow, it was a flash. God the Father dealt with it, and he was out on his ear. No access. He was kicked out. He's lost all his privileges, stripped of everything, and he was banished. It also tells us that not only did Jesus witness the fall, it means that Jesus witnessed the cause of that fall. That's what I want to get into real quickly. Because if he fell, we've got to ask the questions, where is he now? Where did he fall to? What's he doing? What's his plan? What's his operations? What is he doing right now? Before he was called Satan, he was called Lucifer. Satan it means adversary. It means an opponent. The word devil means accuser and slanderer. He was called before that. Now to, to, to really grasp this, we've got to go back, way, way, way back. Before the foundation of the earth and take a glimpse of eternity, the kingdom of heaven, as it was about to, to bring about the creation of heaven and earth and the formation of humanity on the earth. Now, so let's go way, way back and let's go into the heavenly places, into heaven itself, God's house. Let's take a look at this, this character, Lucifer, and I've got a long passage to read, but, but here we go. Um, two passages in the Old Testament reveal about his role in heaven and about his fall and the cause of it. And when we begin to see this and grasp it, we'll know why Jesus restored our righteousness, restored our uh, spiritual life, restored our access, restored our citizenship, and restored our spiritual authority. All that will make sense when we get through this morning's message. So I hope you're ready. He was called Morning Star Lucifer. Let's go to this next passage. It's found in Ezekiel. Starting with Ezekiel first. And uh, two slides here to real stuff, so I've got a lot of reading to do. Um, <clears throat> he's called Morning Star. It's interesting that Jesus, Yeshua, the Messiah, is called the Bright and Morning Star. He's called the Bright and Morning Star. Lucifer was called the Morning Star because he reflected the very light of God. But let's take a look now at what the scripture says about who he was. Here's the Lord speaking in the book of Ezekiel. This is talking about an earthly ruler, but it has a dual meaning. It's obvious and clear that it's speaking about something more than just an earthly person. Listen, you are the seal of perfection. You are full of wisdom and perfect in beauty. You are in Eden, the garden of God. That's where he brought about the fall of man. Every precious stone was your covering. 
The workmanship of your timbrels and pipes were prepared for you on the day that you were created. Let me just say something here. That, that theologians believe that, that he was the worship director, worship uh, leader in heaven around the throne of the altar of God. And that in his throat he had inbuilt pipes and timbrels. He was the first one-man band. He had, had a percussion, wind and strings built in. That's what you need for music. Percussion, wind and strings. He had it built into his being. No wonder this, this guy's a master at music. He's a master at it. He's beautiful in perfection. That's what it says. Um, look what else it says. You were the anointed cherub who covers. He was anointed by the Holy Spirit of God to, to be in his role. I established you. You were on the holy mountain. What mountain? Mount Zion of God. You walked back and forth in the midst of fiery stones. You were perfect in your ways from the day that you were created until iniquity was found in you. Let me go back there. You walked back and forth in the midst of fiery stones. It's a reference to the golden altar in Revelation 8 and 9. Amen. That, that, that's the very place that God's will is ministered to. If you don't understand it, you'll never really be able to join him in powerful prayer, uh, declarations, proclamations, and agreement, because that's where it's done. I'll explain that this week when we begin to unfold, you know, on, on our Facebook Live. Now, so he said, you were perfect until iniquity. The word iniquity means to pervert. It means that you've got a straight line, but you take it about and you, you twist it out of shape. That means it's perverted. Everything God created for good, Satan comes and perverts it and twists it. Yeah? Take something like, like sex. Sex is a good thing. It was created by God. It was created for pleasure and procreation. What Satan does comes along and he twists it and he perverts it. And then we get immorality and all kinds. It, it goes off the rails. Just an example of the word iniquity. Let's go to the next uh, slide. Thank you, Christine. By the abundance of your trading, you became filled with violence within and you sinned. Therefore, I cast you as a profane thing out of the mountain of God. This is a reference to the fall of Satan. He fell from Zion. And I destroyed you, O covering cherub, from the midst of the fiery stones. Your heart was lifted up because of your beauty. You corrupted your wisdom for the sake of your splendor. I cast you out to the ground. I laid you before kings that they may gaze upon you. Oh, listen to this. You defiled your sanctuaries by the multitude of your iniquities. Just stay there for a minute. Satan is a defiler. Listen to this. He defiled the sanctuary of God through his sin. He's a defiler of sanctuaries. To defile means to mar it, make it unclean and unrighteous and nothing like God, ungodly. He said, you defiled your sanctuaries by the multitude of your perversions. See, here's the thing about sin and perversion, is that once you open the door to it, you can't control it. Because, because it gets worse and worse. It turns into a multitude of sin and iniquities, you know, because sin never satisfies. Let's get back to this, this Lucifer. Can you see he's privileged? He's in heaven. He's a covering for God. He's in charge of heavenly worship. He goes back and forth from over fiery stones. So he's got something to do with setting angel, angels on mission and assignments to perform the word of God and the will of God. What a privileged position he's in. But something snaps in him. Something happens. And he corrupts himself. His ego becomes inflated. What is happening? He's becoming haughty. He's becoming prideful. To the point where he feels and thinks he can take over God's heaven. Oh my goodness. What pride. What arrogance. What treachery. Let's look at this next passage in, in the uh, book of Isaiah. The book of Isaiah. Hope you're learning something. We're talking about the rise of evil. How evil came to be in the earth. Well, we're seeing how he back his blood and cleansed it. Do you know why in the book of the end of, in the end of Revelations, do you know why that there's going to be a new heavenly Jerusalem, a new Jerusalem? Because Satan defiled the old heavenly Jerusalem. Amen. And whilst the blood has cleansed it, God one day will purge it from that curse of sin. Amen. And he's going to create a new Jerusalem. Praise God. And that's going to join with the brand new heaven and earth. And you and I are going to have been resurrected in new bodies. And we'll have access, as Adam did, to enjoy God's wisdom, tap in and worship him. It will be the worship capital of the universe. But we'll also have a life on the earth and adventures to live out and populate it and prosper and be at peace and live in righteousness and be filled with joy and our satisfaction and fulfillment when heaven and earth is joined together. Stay with me. 
Satan is a defiant look. Let's take a look at Isaiah then. You'll find this uh, in Isaiah 14. Let's read it. How you have fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning. How you were cut down to the ground, you who weakened the nations. We'll get to that in a minute. For you have said in your heart, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will sit in the mount of the congregation on the farthest sides of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the most high. What arrogance. What pride. He wanted to take over heaven. He wanted to be higher than God. He wanted to be God. Isn't that the lie that, that he's perpetuating out, out on the earth today? You don't need God. You are God. You're your own God. Yet you shall be brought down to show to the lowest depths of the pit. A couple of things I want to touch on here. You who weakened the nations. In our text back in... Um, where was it? Uh, Ezekiel. It tells us that Satan targeted nations and cities. He targets nations and cities. When you read these passages, you read it. I don't have time to get back over it today. Why? Because, listen to me, the world is run from a city. It's called Zion. Heavenly Jerusalem. The city of God. Heavenly Jerusalem. Heaven. Amen. Inside that city... God has a sanctuary. And inside that sanctuary, God's throne is established. And before his throne is a golden altar of incense. It's where prayers arrive. And angels, innumerable angels, gather around that altar to hear prayers that are in line with the will of God. To hear prayers that are in agreement with God. And they are released on assignment with every prayer that is in agreement, that has been confessed. We have access, guys, to that throne and altar. Let that sink in. Jesus resurrected, died, resurrected and ascended to restore us to the throne and the altar. Hallelujah. The altar is for altering things. If you want to see, see alteration, amen, the altar is to alter everything out of sync with the will of God. Wow. I teach all this in my training course. Jesus, the way, the truth and the life. I mean, you've got to get on it. When the lockdown's over, I'm going to plan some spiritual retreats. If you want to invest in your spirituality, contact me, let me know. And uh, you know, I'll tell you one that you have a great time. You will be different in just three days. I'll change your life. I'll change your theology. I'll change your belief system. Amen. I'll, I'll have you so in tune with God and so working that throne and altar. Amen. That you will be a powerhouse. Amen. The devil will be afraid of you because you're going to be one of those mighty ones that bring heaven to earth in our day. That subdue evil and bring healing. Amen. And deliverance to our world. Look at this. Satan asserted his own will above God's. He became proud and haughty in his heart. He determined to, exalt, determined to exalt his throne above God. Oh my goodness. It says that those who see you, you look at the next slide. Those who see you will gaze at you. Listen to this. And they'll consider you saying, Is this the man? Is this the one? You've got to be joking me. This is the one, look what he did, who shook kingdoms, who made the world as a wilderness and destroyed its cities. Who didn't open the house of his prisoners. Is this the one? Is this the devil? Is this that Lucifer? Is this Satan? The one who deceived the world, shook kingdoms, uh, laid waste the cities and imprisoned people in spiritual houses. You tell me that this is him? Wow. How did he accomplish that? Now we're going to ask them. We're talking about the rise of evil in the earth. I haven't got a lot of time left. But we're, we're talking about the rise of evil in the world. How did he get to defiling heaven, to defiling earth, to be promoted, to be the god of this world, to the place where he's shaking nations, taking captive cities, and he's holding people as prisoners? How did he go from falling from heaven to ruling the earth? I'm glad you asked. I'm glad you asked. Let me tell you what happened. Amen. And I was seeking God over the last few years. God has downloaded all these truths. In the power of revelation truth. I've never seen it before in 37, 38 years. 
until the Lord began to bring me into the spirit and really begin to, you know, uh, uh, give me downloads. Satan had first hand information about the city of God, Zion, heavenly Jerusalem. He knows how it works, guys. He was right there in the throne room. He, he, he <coughs> walked back to the fiery coals of the altar. He knows how the throne of the altar work. He knows how angel assignments are at work. He knows how prayer, confessions, and declaration, he knows how it works. He knows how the kingdom of God is administered from this place. He knows the power of a city. So when he fell, you know what he did? He set up his own city. It's called Babylon, and we'll read about it in a minute in the uh, book of Revelation. Babylon is not an earthly nation. Babylon is Satan's spiritual city where he set up his own throne. He wanted gods, couldn't have it. He set up his own throne in this city called Babylon and he's ordered, he's patented. The devil is a counterfeit. He has a replica city called Babylon in the spirit realm. And this is where he begins to order his kingdom. And all those angels that fell that deceived, think about that, how did he deceive them angels from under God's nose? So we're not dealing with a duckhead, we're dealing with a master deceiver. We're dealing with somebody who's got charisma and, and influ power of influence to take a third of God's angels from under his nose. What did he do? Well, he probably fed them some lies like he did our first parents, Adam and Eve. He probably fed them lies that went something like, hey guys, you're really happy here with it that we're having? I'm telling you, God's holding out on you, but if you'll follow me and join me, amen, I'm going to take you to the wonderful destiny. You shall be as God if you follow me. It's the same old age old lie. Let's take a look. So he comes, he sets up his city Babylon, and then what does he do? He's got no access to heaven. No access back to the throne of the altar. He sets his own throne and altar up in the spirit realm. Amen. And from here, his target now is earth. He was in the Garden of Eden, it says, the Garden of God. What is he doing? He's a defiler of sanctuaries. So he, now his aim is to defile man, woman, to defile the earth, to cut them off from their source of power of inspiration revelation, to destroy the relationship between mankind and God. Why? Because if he can destroy that, then he can stop them. They've got no source to bring heaven to earth. They're cut off, which means that he can bring Babylon to earth. That means that he can bring a spread of evil, widespread wickedness across the globe. If he can just cut man off, if he can just destroy his relationship with God. Let's take a look, first of all, at his city. It's found in Revelation. Let me just show you this. All the time's running out. We've got a few minutes left. <clears throat> Another angel followed, saying, Babylon is fallen, is fallen, the great city, because she's made all nations drink of the wine of the wrath of her fornication. This can't be any one nation, guys. No one nation has got the power over all nations like Babylon. This is Satan's spiritual city. Look at it. Mystery. Babylon. The great, the mother of harlots and the abominations of the earth. Why is there evil and wickedness in the earth? Because this city has been set up. It used to man's authority, cut off his relationship with heaven and his maker. And he lost citizenship, he lost access. And now the field is open. Satan and his hordes of minions move in on the earth after they've tempted man to disobey God. They've cut him off. He's got his powerless. He's got no authority. The field is open. Satan moves in and he sets up Babylon. As the world ruler, now he rules from his throne of Babylon. He is the God of this world. Let's look at this next scripture and show you. Babylon the Great is fallen. Good news, guys. God is going to destroy it. If you read the book of Revelation, it takes one angel to do it. One angel from heaven will sort it out. Amen. Under God's command and God's word. Babylon the Great is fallen, is fallen, has become a dwelling place of demons, a prison for every foul spirit and a cage for every unclean and hated bird. For all the nations have drunk of the wine of the wrath of her fornication. The kings of the earth have committed fornication with her, and the merchants of the earth have become rich through the abundance of her luxury. Can you see what happens? This system, this evil system, Satan set up, it plays uh, uh, havoc with the world. Because it caters to man's fallen nature. It caters to sin. It caters to pride. The very sin of the devil. It caters to the ego. It caters to the lust of the flesh. It caters to all of this. And so man becomes a, a, a captive. Trapped under an evil world system. A prisoner in Babylon. Remember what we just read earlier? He won't let his prisoners go free. What's the first thing that Jesus did? He established connection with Zion, 
through prayer and devotion. And here's what the Lord Jesus said. You can't plunder a, a, a man out of the teeth. You can't go in and plunder his goods until you first wrestle the guy to the ground and disarm him. That, my friend, is the work of the church in the earth to do to today. There's no way you can spoil the goods. You know where you can bring the harvest of the earth in for God until we first of all subdue evil. You cannot subdue evil in your own strength and power and talent and, and, and majesty. Amen. You need to establish spiritual connection, spiritual life, access. Amen. Citizenship. And then you need to come under the glory of God, of inspiration, revelation of power, of the spirit of God, so that God can begin to, re to empower you with authority to subdue evil in the earth. Why is it not being done with lightning speed? Because the church is a slow coach. Because the church is slow to learn. Remember the disciples, how many times did Jesus say, oh, how long do I have to put up with you guys? Why was he saying? Amen, he was frustrated because they were slow to learn and slow. We, that's the, the, the day and age in which we live, the church, listen to me, God's dismantling it. Because the old system cannot do what God wants to do. Amen. I'm almost out of clothes. The evil suit is responsible for the wickedness and evil that's played out through the nations and cities of God. But what we've got to ask is, how did it get into the world? I've got five minutes. Am I okay for five, just five minutes? Stay with me. How did this defiler get into the earth and start defiling it and bring about such a spread of evil and wickedness that everyone from every nation is tinged and touched by it. How did it happen? Amen. In this sentence, listen. The fall of man. The fall of man. God gave, now listen, I'm going to answer the question, but if there's so much evil in the world, why doesn't God do something about it? God has done something about it. He dealt with it with light and speed in his house. Amen. But the earth, amen, is our house. And, and now what God is doing, Jesus modeled it, then he, then he trained them, then he released them and said, I'm giving you authority and go forth and do it. Then he said, we all give you authority. And the last time when he was about to go, he gave the great commission, go into all the earth, preach the gospel, heal the sick, cast out devils, do what I've done. I'm going back to the Father to represent you so that you can come and come under divine power and inspiration so you can be in the world as I was, that you can subdue evil, bring kingdom of God and the kingdom of heaven to earth. So he gave the earth to man. And the reason that the flood of evil and, and, and wickedness is in the earth today is man's problem, not God's problem. Grieves me when I hear people say, oh, where's God? Where's God? God's done everything, guys. Where are you? That's the question. Where are you? Where is the church? Come to the light and join in the fight. Amen. It's not a time right now for, for dilly-dallying. This is a time, amen, when Satan knows that his end is near, that he's going to flood the earth with greater floods of evil. The Lord spoke to me a few weeks ago. This is the first of many floods that will come into the earth. Amen. Because Satan is angry. Satan knows his time is short. But it's also the time that God is gloriously going to lift up the church into the heavens. Amen. And she comes up and worships there and takes her place in the new covenant. Takes her place as a, as a spiritual temple and priesthood. The Lord's going to begin to release heavenly spiritual strategies <clears throat> for subduing evil and bringing in the harvest. Now you can carry on your old way if you want, but I'm going to heaven. Amen. Every single day. I'm going to make the most of this. Amen. Access. And as you do, the gifts of the Spirit will come upon you. The power and anointing of the Spirit of God will come upon you in a mighty way. We're almost there. Fallen from heaven and arriving at the earth, he comes into the garden of God, as we've just read, and Satan targets Adam and Eve. He's already defiled heaven, now he pitches all of his efforts against earth and earth's sanctuaries. Remember, your body's a temple, it's a sanctuary of the Holy Spirit. First attack was against Adam and Eve, he defiled their sanctuary. He cut them off in spiritual life and connection, defiled the sanctuary. Once the temple's defiled, the rest of it just follows. There's no power, there's no source. Amen. His aim is to defile and destroy God's plan and for the earth and humanity. His weapons, what are they? They're simple. His weapons are deception, uh, temptation and lies. That's how we won the third of the angels. That's how we won our parents over. Are you sure God said that? No, listen. Take the notice of God. Follow me and you'll be as God. That's what he told them. And they went for the lie, disobeyed God and they plunged. The curse of sin. Now the curse that was in heaven, the curse, they invited it in. Listen to me. This is our problem. Quit blaming God.
Blame yourself. The book stops right here. And what God needs today is spiritual men and women. Uh, uh, sons of glory. And men and women that will, will take this series and go and come under the inspiration of heaven today. So that they can make a difference in the world. God wants to make you a change agent. I've run out of time. He creates doubt in the mind. Let me close with this scripture. Jesus called him a liar and a murderer. He said he's a thief. He comes to steal, kill and destroy. And the reason that there's evil and wickedness in the world today is that the church is slow to act on her heavenly calling and release spiritual authority to subdue evil in order that you and I might make a better world and begin to restore the kingdom of heaven on earth. Wow. Isn't that amazing? Oh, wow. I need my dinner now. I need a coffee, I think. Jesus redeemed us. Jesus restored us. Why? To empower us. What for? To subdue evil, wickedness, and to bring deliverance and healing to the world. Listen, believer, church, leader, it's time to grow up in our salvation. Let me close with this. Behold, I give you the authority to trample on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy and nothing shall by any means hurt you. See, while we're waiting on God, God's waiting on us. I mean really waiting on us. And while we're in defense mode, oh Lord, you're on the throne. God's on the throne. It's never been in question. God's always been on the throne. You don't have to remind us of that. Oh, we trust you, Lord. We trust you for what? Amen. He wants to trust you to rise up into this vision and begin to be a change agent. The question of trusting God through this is not, that means that implies that we're just hanging on now for break. We're hanging on until the lockdown's over. We're hanging on until God comes and saves the world. Listen to me. Amen. You and I are going to uh, uh, save the world because he's raised us up and restored us to be change agents. Let me pray for you. Father, in the name of Yeshua, I bless you and praise you. I give you all honour and glory. Lord, let this word penetrate minds and hearts today and let it make a massive difference. Let this be, Lord, a day of transition. Lord, out of darkness to light, out of blindness to sight. Lord, from Satan to God. And Lord, I pray for every believer to come into the revelation of Jesus, the way, the truth, and the life, and that they would rise up, O Lord God, and become, Lord, powerfully charged from heaven itself and its resources so that they can be change agents, that we can restore the world, Lord, to righteousness, that we can subdue evil and wickedness, that we can be salt and light the earth, O oh God, and make a difference so that we can bring Satan under the written judgment of the word of God and, Lord, bring in the wonderful harvest of God. So empower every believer today. Empower them, God, by your spirit. Empower them by your word. Amen. If you like what I've said, Amen. God bless you. And don't forget, if you'd like to give, uh, make a donation, uh, and you so feel led to do that, you can go on our website and uh, uh, go to the donate page, uh, uh, page and, and you can do that. A great big thank you for all of our supporters who are supporting uh, prayerfully and, and financially. Thank you for those that are coming on and, and helping us to establish you know, the ministries, it keeps going on through our Zoom and through WhatsApp and through Facebook Live. Uh, I hope you're inspired. God bless you. Love you today. Hope to meet you again very soon, face to face. It's going to be a great, great time, isn't it? Hopefully they'll let things up in a few weeks and we'll, we'll, we'll get back uh, to some kind of normality. All that remains to say, start believing and start living, my friend. Great big God bless you. Enjoy the rest of your day and have a blessed week. Amen.